In this lesson, we're going to be looking at indirect proof. And indirect proof comes from these two ideas of indirect reasoning and then a definition of indirect proof itself. So let's begin with indirect reasoning. This is when all possibilities are considered and all but one are proven false. This one that remains must be the truth. I believe it was Arthur Conan Doyle, through the character of Sherlock Holmes, who said, when you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however unlikely, must be the truth. And that's a process of using indirect reasoning. You do this when you're looking for something at home every day. You get rid of places that it is not, and then wherever is remaining, it must be located at. Now, an indirect proof uses indirect reasoning in order to come up with the method for solving. And there are three main steps for using indirect proof. The first is that you take your proof statement and state its negation as being what you want to prove. Because if you can disprove this negation, then the actual statement must be true. Next is that you show the negation leads to a contradiction. And with this, you are able to state that the negation is false and the original statement must be the truth. So we're going to go through some practice on these three steps and lead up to actually writing an indirect proof. So let's get started. First, we're going to take some statements and practice writing their negations. So if ABCD is a square, the contradiction to this, or the negation, would be simply that ABCD is not a square. It could be any other quadrilateral, just not a square. Next, N is even. So the negation to this would be to simply say that n is odd. And we'd have mathematical ways of going through and proving that this is true or false. So writing the negation of a statement becomes important, but also finding contradictions. So in the bottom here, I have three statements. Statement 1, triangle ABC is acute. Statement 2, triangle ABC is equilateral. And statement 3, triangle ABC is scalene. Two of these contradict one another. So let's start taking them pair by pair. Tri no, statements 1 and 2. Is it possible to have an acute triangle that's also equilateral? Well, yes. All equilateral triangles are acute. Let's go with 1 and 3. Can you have an acute triangle that is scalene? Yes, you can. An um, 89, 31, 60 degree triangle would be acute and scalene because all Side measurements are different. All angle measurements would be also. So let's look at 2 and 3. Can you have a scalene triangle that is also equilateral? That is false. So statements 2 and 3 cannot happen at the same time. Those are where we have our contradiction. So being able to write the negations and go through and find contradictions lead us up to actually building and writing an indirect proof. So let's take a look at one that we can do here quickly. So given 5 times the quantity of x plus y equals 80, and knowing that x is not 7, we need to prove that y is not 9. So we're going to begin our proof in the following manner. First, we're going to assume that y equals 9. Now in the equation, this means that 5 times the quantity of x plus 9 equals 80. Going through solving this and showing the work by hand, we will divide both sides by 5 so that we have x plus 9 equals 16. Then subtracting 9 from each side leaves us with x equals 7, which contradicts our statement as a given fact that x could not equal 7. So, by indirect proof, we automatically know that y cannot equal 9 as our end result. So, indirect proof, we're simply negating what we're trying to prove. We prove that that could never happen, and then we assume that our original proof idea is true. So, make sure you have this down and ready to use as we go through proving things in geometry.